Hey everybody, I'm MS Farzan, and welcome to this update to my series on how to make a 2D multiplayer card game using Unity and Mirror. If you're new to this series, you might be thinking, why does it need an update? Well, since the first version of these tutorials, Unity and Mirror have both been updated quite a bit, and some things have broken or become outdated in the process. I've also received a ton of great feedback about the previous series, and have worked to incorporate quite a bit of it into this new version, which includes more features, shorter videos, and a streamlined template project that you're free to use to make your own games. One caveat before we get started. If you're brand new to Unity, c -sharp, or programming in general, you may want to check out some of my more introductory tutorials before tackling this one. I will link them, as well as the project for this series, in the description for this video. Cool, so let's get started by taking a look at what we're eventually going to create throughout this series. What I have here is a Unity scene that features a few different things that we'll tackle in turn over the course of the series. You can see that uh, I am using Unity 2020.2.6F1 uh, personal. You might have a different or more recent version of Unity. If you find that some things aren't working for you, you might want to uh, revert back to this version to make sure that we're using the same thing. Um, I've seen a few issues with this before, mostly with Mirror, which we'll introduce later. But it just uh, it, just to caveat that if you're having some sort of issue with the engine, it might be because I'm using an older version than you are. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, play this scene and demonstrate that because I'm using Mirror, which is going to handle our networking for us, I'm able to choose whether or not I want to play as a host, meaning that I have a server and a client all bundled within this one application, or I want to use, uh, I want this build to be a client, or I want it to be a server only. Right now, if I play as a, as a host, I'm able to see my scene that's uh, playing in the, uh, in the game tab. I can click this button to draw cards and we'll be using sprites from one of my games called Entermancy Hacker Battles. Uh, and we'll be able to mouse over each one of these cards to see them more clearly. You probably can't see them very well on, on your screen because uh, I'm, I'm playing this in a windowed version. And we'll be able to drag and drop them and we'll be able to, to utilize that to display information to the console. And what's really cool is if I build a version of this game by pressing Control B, uh, we will look through what it looks like to uh, build a version of the game and have one game, one client working just as a client, the other client working as a server and a client or a host, as we discussed. And while we're using both clients, you'll see that I have one of them that uh, we just built is running, so that's why it looks a bit bigger. Then I'll use the editor to spin up the other client, and let's say I want this client to be the host, the server, and a client. And I want the built version to just be a client. Now we have the same scene here. When I click draw, draw cards on one client, I can then look at the other client, and those cards display, the backs of those cards display on this other client. When I draw cards here, I can see my cards here, and I can mouse over them and to get a better look. And those cards have now populated up here on the initial client with uh, their backs facing the player. And that player can now mouse over their, can also mouse over their own cards. So even cooler is that when I drag and drop a card on one client, it falls right into this drop zone that we have here. And that also appears, the card that was played appears here on the second client. The same thing happens, let's say I'm dragging this blue card, I drag it from this client to the drop zone, and that sends a message to create the same on the initial client here. Meanwhile, on the back end of things, if I look at my console, we're um, logging stuff to the debugger uh, through our code to demonstrate a few things about how the actual networking works so that if you have like spells that you want to cast that are only supposed to work on one player but not the other or if you have other uh, parameters that are specific to your game 
I won't obviously know all those parameters because I don't know your game, but we're building the architecture to help you to be able to accomplish that by the end of this tutorial series. Uh, I'm going to stop this right now and just uh, uh, show you that what we'll be doing here, we'll start out with just a simple scene where we're um, manipulating cards, dragging and dropping them, and writing all the scripts for that, um, which are contained in some of these scripts, like um, how do we flip our cards, how do we zoom into them, uh, how do we drag and drop them. And then we'll move to, um, throughout the whole process, we'll import Mirror, which I mentioned is going to handle our networking. We'll talk about that quite a bit. And we'll see what it looks like to actually spin up more than one client at once and have them start communicating with one another. And that's going to require us to build a bunch of different prefabs for our cards, um, uh, like uh, this card, for example. Um, we'll build prefabs for our um, our uh, drop zone, for our enemy and player areas, uh, for the cards that are going to be zoomed, even for our little button. Uh, and that will all be covered within this series, plus more. So great. I uh, hope this has been helpful to give you an overview of what we are going to attempt to create throughout this tutorial series, and I will see you soon in the next video. Please be sure to like uh, this video and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Twitter, and please do check out my books and games. I'll put a link in the description of this video for you to do that. See you next time.